English grammar and outline Rodney Huddleston. Chapter 1 Preliminaries The description of the language comprises three major components phonology, grammar, and lexicon. The phonology describes the sound systems, consonants, vowels, stress, intonation, and so on. The two most basic units of grammar are the word and the word forms the word and the sentence one subcomponent of grammar called morphology deals with the form of words with the other called syntax deals with the way words combine to form sentences the lexicon or dictionary they use a more familiar term list of vocabulary items mainly words and idioms such as read hearing give up and so on specifying how they are pronounced how they behave grammatically and what they mean. In this book, we will confine our attention to the grammar with only occasional passing mention of phonological and lexical matters. <coughs> On another dimension, we can distinguish between the study of linguistic form and the study of meaning. All three of the major components are concerned with aspects of both the aspects. A special term semantics applied to the study of meaning and we can accordingly distinguish phonological semantics covering as such matters as the meaning expressed by stress intonation grammatical semantics dealing with the meaning associated with grammatical categories such as past tense interrogative clause and so on and lexical semantics the meaning of vocabulary items the relation between form and meaning in grammar is by no means straightforward this is one of the issues we shall need to consider in the introduction introductory chapter where the aim is to explain briefly the model or framework of grammatical description that we shall be using in the book and the methodological approach adopted we begin with the question of how we can go about defining the various grammatical categories that will figure in the description category such as noun subject imperative clause past tense and so on <coughs> there are inevitably to be considerable number of them grammatical categories definition and prototypes it is important to distinguish two levels of which our grammatical categories need to be defined the language particular level and the general level at the language particular level we are concerned with the properties that characterize the category in the particular language under consideration which in our case of course is english but which might equally well be french or to vietnamese or whatever at this level we investigate for example how nouns verbs adjectives etc behave differently in english sentence structure how english distinguishes between the subject and object of a verb and so on at a general level by contrast our concern is with the properties that are common across different languages to categories such as noun verb adjective as object object The underlying words in the to, to make this distinction more concrete, consider the part of speech analysis of the underlying words in the following sentence. The boss had watched the secretary destroy the files. The boss has witnessed the destruction of the files. At the language particular level, we will give the criteria that led us to put all the words with solid underlining boss, secretary, etc. into one part of speech and all those with broken underlining and what does it try and do a second at the general level we will give the criteria that led us to the call the first class noun and the second verb we do not devise a fresh set of terms for its new language we describe but draw rather on a large refer to your of general terms definitions at the general level provide a principled basis for applying these terms to the various categories that need to be differentiated in the grammatical description of particular languages <coughs> considerable confusion arises when this distinction of level is not made when what is really a general definition is in effect presented as to 
with varied language theoretical definition and this happens quite frequently in traditional grammar especially traditional school grammar for example the standard traditional definition of a noun as the name of a person place or thing is commonly presented as to it is provided provided the criteria for the setting which words in the english are nouns that is as to it provide the language particular definition where it varies it should be constituted as providing as criteria for deciding which word classes English should be called noun. This is part of general definition for when it is constituted at the language particular level. The definition is clearly unsatisfactory. Suppose we take thing as it appears in the definition of a equivalent to concrete object by this criteria. The structure will be excluded from the class of nouns as it obviously does not not a concrete object but in fact all grammarians include it in the noun class because in terms of the way it enters into the structure of grammatical sentence it behaves like the boss secretary etc nor does the definition fare any better if we say the thing is to be interpreted in some abstract sense since this simply makes it circularly unworkable for we would have no way of determining whether a word or word was the name of a thing in this more abstract sense which did not presuppose that we already knew whether it was a noun thus the way we decide to assign destruction in two and destroy in the different classes is by noting not the destruction denotes a thing while destroy does not <coughs> but rather that they differ in their grammatical behavior In the first place, the very destroy takes as complement as expression like the files, but noun do not take complements of this kind. Destruction takes a complement introduct introduced by of. Secondly, destruction like other nouns enters into construction and definish definite article D, but we could not add the just before destroyed in thirdly if we wanted to add a modifier we would use an adjective with the noun destruction. Example the super the surreptitious destruction of the files, but an adverb would destroy examples of surreptitiously destroy the files and so on. It is properties of this kind that must figure in our definition of nouns and verbs at the language particular level. At the general level, we will reformulate the definition of to avoid misinterpretation, saying that noun is the part of speech which contains among its most elementary members those words that denote person place or concrete objects because it is general definition the fact that noun not all nouns in english denote person place or concrete object does not invalidate it both sec secretary files destruction belong to the same part of speech in english because they are alike with respect to the kind of grammatical property mentioned above the part of speech when we then call noun because this is the one to which words denoting person, places, and concrete object belong. Words like both secretary files. As a second example, consider the category imperative, close, imperative, contrast, and declarative, and interrogative, as illustrated in be generous, imperative, be generous, declarative, are generous, interrogative. An imperative clause is commonly defined as one that is used to use one that is used to issue a command or request. But it is easy to see from examples like three that this will not work as a language particular definition. <coughs> Have a good holiday imperative. Passengers are requested to remain seated declarative. Would you mind speaking a little more slowly? Interrogative. Imperative 1 would normally be used to express a hope or wish rather than a request, and conversely 2 and 3 would normally be used as requests but are not imperative clauses. A language particular definition of imperative clause for English will have to refer to the grammatical properties to distinguish clauses like 1 in 2 and 3 for the declar from declaratives like 2 and interrogative like note for example the form of the verb in 2 be in 1 but are in and 3 and again it is hard that we find 2 3 another difference is that the imperative here 
have no object where is the declarative and interrogative to you or passengers on the basis of such definitions, difference which we will need to specify with a good deal more care and precision. We will assign clause like 2a, 3a, 2a distinct clause, co clause class at the language particular level. And we can draw on the fact that members of this class are characteristically used as commands requests to apply the general term imperative to the class that we have established. Again, then we will need to reformulate the traditional definition so as to make it clear that this to be interpreted at the general level. The term imperative clause will be applied to a grammatically distinguishable class of clauses whose members are characteristically used as a <coughs> commands request the fact that examples like 3i are analyzed as imperative clauses now no longer a problem they are assigned to the same clause class as 2i because they are like 2i in respect of the grammatical form this class is called imperative because the great majority of its members are like 2i in that they would most naturally be used as commands or requests <coughs> Notion in the name of a person, place, or thing, an imperative clause is one that is used as command or request. How about examples of what has a common, commonly called notional definition? Definition based on the semantic properties of expression that is their meaning rather than on their grammatical form. Notational definitions are unsatisfactory at the language particular level because the relation between categories of grammatical form and category of meaning is normally too complex for us to be able to define the former in terms of the latter essential last task for the grammarian is precisely to show how categories of grammatical forms are related to categories of meaning and notational definition at the language particular level thus confuses the very thing that we need to distinguish and relate it is more about that we will recognize a grammatical categories in analyzing a given language only if it is grammatically distinguishable from other categories in the language. To take a very obvious example, <coughs> we will not recognize pointed noun as subclass, subclass of nouns containing words like pin or spire, which denote pointed objects because there is nothing grammatically special about such words. They are dramatically distinguishable from words like circle or bed. A satisfactory definition or explanation of a grammatical category must thus surely make difference to the kind of properties that justify inclusion in our analysis properties based on the distinctive grammatical behavior. This is notional definition completely fails to do. The objects sounds to notational definition apply however only at the language particular level at a general level we are concerned with naming and identifying across languages categories that have already been established by language particular criteria and here it is perfectly legitimate to make use of notational definition this is not to say that general definitions will be based exclusively on meaning but normally they will be expected to include some reference to meaning although we do not find a one-to-one -one relation between categories of grammatical form and categories of meaning we do not expect to find grammatical categories that have no connection at all with semantic categories rather they will have their basis in semantics and in the general definitions will need to indicate what is the semantic basis for a given categories the grammatical distinction between declaratives, interrogatives, and imperatives in English, for example, clearly has its basis in the semantic distinction between statements, questions, and requests and commands. We, uh, we can regard the former as realizing through the grammaticalization of the letter the process of grammatical differentiation on the basis of semantic differences. general categories are universal all language for example distinguishes between nouns and verbs many however belong in only a subset of languages <coughs> we contrast the two two and two three above as declarative versus interpretive but the letter belongs more precisely to the category of close interrogative as opposed to an open interrogative like where are they going 
and this is the sticker is of close then open and of close are not found in all languages they apply to close construction which members are characteristically used to ask questions where the set of your charge is respectively closed and open and for the new to generous the answer is yes or no where is where are you where are they going has an indefinite number of possible answers to camera to new work and so all languages enable their speakers to ask these two kind of questions but they do not all have distinction distinctive close construction based on them the distinction between statements and closed questions is grammaticalized in english by the different position of the subject but there are languages where it is expressed by difference in intonation rather than by difference in grammatical construction and this type of language therefore has no grammatical category of closed interrogative close and similarly there are languages which have no grammatical distinction as opposed to an intonational one corresponding to that found in english between the open interrogative we are the where are they going and the declarative they are going somewhere <coughs> and here the grammatical category of open interrogative clause will likewise not applicable it is for this reason that our general definitions incorporate a condition of grammaticalization as the general term closed interrogative will be defined as apply applying to a grammatical distinction clause class whose similar members are theoretically used to ask closed question the difference to a grammatically distinction closed class ensure that the definition will be satisfied only in languages where the semantic category is grammaticalized grammaticalized more specifically in the structure of the clause as we have observed the grammaticalization condition in this is in this example satisfied in english but there are other categories including one or two the figure in traditional grammars of english where it is not as we shall see in chapter 5 for example that english has no future tense <coughs>